Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to launch a nuke in Fallout 76 and most importantly I'm going to teach you how to solve the substitution cipher required to actually launch the nuke. First things first, you're going to have to finish the main quest of the game. So open your Pip-Boy, check that main quest tab and keep doing those missions until you're done. So obviously, spoiler alert, and with that said, let's go ahead and get into the first step. At the end of the main quest, you'll have to investigate different leads on launching the nuke. Following this process will take you to the archive terminal in the Enclave bunker, which later leads to the basement of Mama Dolce's. In that terminal of Mama Dolce's in the basement there, you find an entry that explains it's a substitution cipher with eight letters that correspond to the different numbers required to launch the nuke. And doing this is optional because I'm about to explain exactly how this all works. So first things first, you got to use the terminal in the Enclave Vault to locate all the eight different silo codes for one of the three sites, Alpha, Bravo, or Charlie. So commit to doing one of them. Check with your friends and make sure that you collectively have all eight. So if you have four of the launch codes for Charlie and your friend has four of the launch codes for Charlie, then you have all eight. But it's not that simple because you can't have any duplicates. If you both have J4 or A2, then you don't have them all. All of them have to be unique. A1, B2, C4, D4. Uh, it could have the same numbers, but it can't have the same letters. So this process has some interesting features where sometimes the guys don't spawn in the location. It's pretty annoying at different locations like Grafton, because if you fast travel there, there happens to be a bunch of mutants in Grafton, and there could also be some Scorched, like the Scorched officer that you're looking for. And maybe the mutants have already killed all the Scorched. And maybe the Scorched has traveled outside of the zone that's marked on your map, because we've had that happen, where the Scorched isn't even in the circle designated to be searched. What I ended up having to do sometimes was back out and try a different server. Um, if you really can't find them, and it keeps sending you to Grafton to search for one, back out and try a different server, it could give you a different location. That helped me out. Another thing you can do is you can abandon these quests. So if you open your Pip-Boy and you go to your main quest tab and you look at the one for finding the code, you can always abandon it. On PC, hit R. On console, there should be an option uh, below. Once you have all eight codes for either Alpha, Bravo, or Charlie, you should put them in a grid and head back to the bunker to find the substitution cipher key. On the wall in this Enclave bunker, you see a key for Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. At the time of me recording this video, only Alpha has the full word, but the ones for Bravo and Charlie are fairly obvious. Take Charlie, for instance. Um, at first, I thought the word for Charlie was white beards, but uh, I knew I was wrong because the word can't have two of the same letters, and obviously white beards has the letter E twice. So my friend pointed out to me that it was white boards. This is where we can start our substitution cipher. Once you have all eight silo codes and the word on the wall, we can get this done. One thing to note is that I believe these cipher keys on the wall in the bunker reset every week. I'm not sure if that's going to be Sunday night, Monday morning, but these codes on the wall and the silo codes in your inventory only last one week. So they'll be new every week and you have to redo it every time. With that being said, throughout the course of the week, I'm pretty sure these codes on the wall slowly reveal more letters. Right now, it was easy to guess what those words were because we only had one letter left to guess. At the start of the week, there might only be two letters available to you, and at that point, it's going to be a lot harder to even understand what word it could be. Anyways, with all of our silo codes, and with the keyword found on the bunker wall, we can now start the substitution cipher. So this keyword, we're going to pop that at the start of the alphabet. So in this case, we have whiteboards. W-I-T-E-B-O-A-R-D-S, followed by the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know the rest. But we can't have a 36 letter alphabet. We need to have it be 26 letters. So what we're going to do in that whole A, B, C, D, E, F, G section is we're going to get rid of any duplicate letters from the word whiteboard. So we're going to get rid of the letter W at the end of the alphabet. We're going to get rid of H near the start of the alphabet. I, T, E, B, O, R. Once again, you know the rest. We're going to get rid of all of those letters from the alphabet, and we'll be left with our correct substitution key. This logic applies to any of the words. This morning, when we launched uh, alpha, 
the word was stewarding. So instead of getting rid of the letters whiteboard from our alphabet, we get rid of all of the letters in stewarding. So we get rid of S, T, E, W, uh, all the rest, until we're left with that 26 letter full alphabet that has all of the letters just rearranged differently. The next step is to basically translate our substitution alphabet for the regular alphabet as we know it. So going back to the example I did earlier in game, where we had our whiteboards alphabet, followed by the C, F, G, and all the rest of the letters, we translate that to the regular alphabet. So W becomes A, H becomes B, I becomes C, T becomes D, and you can go down the list. So the fourth letter in our whiteboard alphabet, our ciphered alphabet, becomes the fourth letter in the regular alphabet. The tenth letter in the ciphered alphabet becomes the tenth letter in the regular alphabet, and the last letter in the ciphered alphabet becomes the last letter in our regular alphabet, which in this case happens to be Z. Now this is where you take all of the letters you got from your silo codes. Again, this is an actual in-game example here. The letters I got in-game were T, W, N, F, A, R, J, and C. So now we look in the top alphabet, this whiteboard alphabet, this the cipher alphabet, and we look for the letter T. So it's the fourth one. So T is going to become D. W is going to become A. N is going to become S. F is going to become N. A is going to become H. R is going to become I. J is O and C is L. So we end up with this D-A-S-M-H-I-O-L, which obviously doesn't spell anything, but that's not the point. If you don't want to do this process manually, you can go to this website, decode.fr. I'll have it linked in the description below. We are looking for a monoalphabetic substitution decoder, and in the field for the substitution decoder, we will put our silo codes. These are the letters that you get from the scorched. And uh, it doesn't matter what order you put them in. And then you'll check off this option for knowing the substitution alphabet for your decryption method. This is where you paste in your whiteboards, your ciphered alphabet, whatever word it happens to be on whatever day you're watching this. After you figure out this alphabet, you put it in there and then you decrypt. And uh, there you'll go. The results are on the left hand side you get the same letters as i showed in doing the example manually with your decoded text you can go to this website rearrangeletters.com i'll have it linked in the description below or you can look up any website that solves anagrams for you all you got to do is paste in your encoded or decoded text pardon me and once you click on rearrange it gives you all of the words that can be made out of those letters that you provided. In this case, our word is halidums. In the other example, uh, when I did launch site A this morning, the word was panelist, but with these letters that I got from the silo codes, there was actually also two other options that, um, that would have worked because they did also make words. So you might have to end up guessing more than once. Now that we have an actual English word, this is what's going to tell us the order of the numbers that we need to input in the launch facility. So taking a look at this example, we had our original silo letters, T2, W3, N0, F5, A6, R6, J6, and C3. When we decode those letters, we end up getting D-A-S-M-H-I-O-L. But all of those decoded letters still have the number associated with them. So T2 becomes D2 when it's decoded. W3 becomes A3 decoded. N0 becomes S0, and so on and so forth. Now, when we rearrange those letters into an actual word, then we find the code for the nuclear launch site. So H6 gets moved to the front of the word. A3 stays where it is. L3 gets put in the third position. So you can see I have it all color-coded there about how we determine the actual order. 
the English word tells us the correct order of the numbers. With the hardest part out of the way, let's get to the easy stuff. The next thing you're going to need to do is get the nuclear key card. That is going to be from a cargo bot. In the Enclave bunker, you can open the terminal and track the cargo bot's location. It's pretty fast and it has a group of vertibots with it. So quickly fast travel to the nearest location and have a long range powerful weapon with you or your full squad there with you who all have long range weapons because it doesn't get very close to the ground. So shoot it out, find the box, lockpick it, and get the key card. At this point, you should have Site Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie all discovered on your map. Depending which silo you've been working on, head over to that location. When you first enter any of them, you'll see this terminal. After reading the second entry, you'll realize you have to get a biometric scanner card. There's a bunch of them laying around the room near the terminal. So as you can see, I pick one up here on the shelf. And then you have to go over to the card ID reader and you have to use the little slot to erase the ID on the card. In the corner of the facility, there is a biometric scanner that you can enter. And that will add your information. So now you go back to the scan card reader and you add your information onto the card. Finally, come back over to the card reader and you register your ID in the system. That'll allow you to pass through the first laser grid. If you continue down the hall, you'll make your way to this reactor room. And the first thing you're gonna have to do is interact with this terminal to start the process for fixing the reactor. You'll see a bunch of pipes around the room all leaking, making a bunch of noise. All you gotta do is walk up and repair them. Once you're done, you can come back to the same terminal and restart the reactor system. The next objective you'll get to is to destroy these cores. Basically all over these computers, you see these little panels that you can interact with and destroy them. As you destroy them, laser grids will go down and you can continue on your path. There's more than enough to destroy. The next step to open the security door is to repair or replace these damaged cores on the terminal. So just like the ones we destroyed in the last room, we have to look around the room to find ones that are in good condition or head over to the Tinker's workbench to fix the ones that we already have. Once you have 15, you can place them back into the terminal panels, interact with the terminal, and open the security door. In the final room, all you have to do is interact with the terminal on the second level to start the launch sequence. A bunch of these little dude robots are going to come out, and for roughly five or so minutes, you'll have to defend them from the Mr. Gutsies and Assaultrons that come out to attack them. When the defending process is done, on the main floor of the room, you can scan your key card. Make sure that the person with the key card is the one who interacts with the panel, because if not everybody shot down the cargo bot, then only one person will have the key card. And then you head over to the keypad, and this is where you enter the key code that you worked so hard to decode and find out. From there, you can head over to the terminal and choose the area that you want to nuke. You can nuke anything besides the areas around Vault 76, so choose wisely. Other than that, I'll leave the actual nuking to yourselves. I'll save all those sorts of spoilers and excitement so you can see them in your own game. That's going to be it for my video. Likes, comments, always appreciated. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below, especially more Fallout content on the way. Uh, until next time, bye for now. Holy shit! ZZ Fuzzy has launched a nuke!